Since 2016, I have sold hundreds of items, including my painted furniture on Facebook Marketplace. Here's what I've learned. Number one, scammers. Never give your personal information to anyone. Scammers will ask you for your phone number or your email. Since marketplace communication is based through Messenger, there's absolutely no reason to communicate in any other way. Always view their profile. Scammers create fake profiles. So if you view their profile and you notice that it's a very new profile or they don't have any pictures or it's kind of obvious that there's like no data underneath and they ask you for your phone number, it's more than likely you're dealing with a scammer. This brings me to tip three in the scammer category. Unless you can view from the profile that they're someone from the neighborhood or their location or they live close by, unless you can verify that they're real, don't give them your Venmo or your Zelle or your PayPal or your Cash App or whatever. Don't give them any information. I know a lot of people who use Venmo or Zelle in their transactions and I've used it myself, but I always verify from the profile that it is a real person. If you can't, if you're new at this, you're not good at it, or you can't figure it out, it's better to be safe than sorry. Just say cash only in your description or just tell the people cash only. Um, it's no big deal and it's very common. Believe me, you're gonna save yourself a lot of grief in the long run. The end game for a scammer is basically to get your personal information to hack your life and steal your money. So. Have that rule, easy peasy. Don't give out your personal information. These scammers have gotten so good in the last couple years. They come up with like elaborate stories. They really come off sounding like real people with real issues. And it's kind of hard to pinpoint, but if you stick to a few simple rules, you can completely avoid being scammed. So rules to follow to avoid scammers recap. One, only communicate on Messenger. Two, do not give your personal information. Three, cash only, unless you can verify that they're a real buyer, like from the neighborhood. Four, always view their profile. You can learn so much from their profile. Number two, SEO. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Anywhere you're on the internet, if you see that search bar, that means that there's an opportunity to optimize your listing for search. So this means adding as many description words you can to your title, your tags, and your description. For example, if you're selling a six drawer green dresser, then in your title, you're gonna wanna put as many words as you can, like six drawer green long dresser. Um, and then you're gonna wanna add that also to your description box and you're gonna wanna add that to your tags. Green dresser, long dresser, um, Stanley dresser, uh, just anything you can think of. Like whatever you would search for when you're looking for something online, think of those, those are gonna be your keywords. And then when somebody adds those, when they're looking for your dresser or looking to buy a dresser, they're gonna put that in the little search bar and because you have them in your description and you have them in your tags and you'll only be able to fit a couple in your title, yours is probably gonna come up first. So that's a really, really good way. SEO is super important when you're trying to sell stuff. So make sure that your listing is super optimized so that um, people can easily find you in search. You'll be like the first one to pop up. Number three, photos. The better the photo, the more money you're likely to make. This is essentially the ad for your piece of furniture. Can you imagine like back in the day going through the Sears catalog and the couch you wanna buy, the ad is this like beautiful couch in somebody's ugly cluttered garage? No, that would never happen. You're trying to sell something so it is the same. People are gonna pay real money you know, they're hard earned money to buy your piece of furniture. So you definitely want the ad to look attractive and inviting. Now in the spirit of honesty, this is the part that I struggle most with. I am by no means an interior designer or any good at photography. There are some amazing furniture flippers on Instagram and YouTube. Look at how they're staging their stuff or get some tips from them. Just by looking at them, you can kind of recreate in your own way that for your listing on Facebook Marketplace. Now for me, I do keep it very simple. Um, here's my tips for staging. Make sure your area is clean and clear of clutter. The back wall should also be inviting. This means don't take a picture in your garage with 
an unfinished wall behind you and you know all the clutter behind you don't do that make sure that that back wall is clean painted you know whether it's a white wall a black wall whatever some a nice wall in your house you can use um, you could buy one of those panels from Home Depot uh, there's just so many options use a curtain don't just don't have any clutter on that back wall. Then as far as staging your piece, that's pretty important. But I, again, keep it really simple. I have this, I have a few like really big vases that I'll put next to my piece and then a vase maybe on top or three vases on top with, you know, different height levels. Um, but I try to keep it as simple as possible because I do like to just let the piece speak for itself. And I don't have a ton of staging items. That's just not where I want to put all my energy into. So, and I'll tell you, if I was selling something, say on Etsy or on a website, I would definitely invest in staging items and learning how to do photography, lighting, um, you know, learning how to stage, I would take some courses or something. There's a lot of stuff that you can pay for out there. And if I was going to sell online and ship, those prices are gonna be a lot more than they are on Facebook Marketplace. So my photos are not like <laughs> super polished. They're just nice, they're simple. I always get different angles. I try to get like really good shots of um, maybe like the part where I blended or an accent just so that it looks really cool. Number four is reviews. You want to establish credibility on Facebook Marketplace so that buyers know that you're professional and you're trustworthy. This means the communication on Facebook Marketplace matters. So you don't want to be rude. You always want to be friendly. You don't want to dismiss. You want to get back to people as soon as you can. You want the experience for the buyer to be exceptional. If you want to get a five star review from them, then you need to give them that five star treatment. And I know it's hard sometimes. There are really difficult people out there, but you just be patient and play the game because you're going to ask them for a review later. And even if you don't ask, they can still review you. Another thing to really think about as far as reviews goes, you want your listing to be honest. So if you're trying to sell a dresser with a broken drawer and you don't disclose that in your description, you're probably going to get a really bad review. You know, it's kind of like you're you're being sneaky. So don't be sneaky. Be honest. If there are imperfections, maybe take a picture or just write it there. It's okay. The more honest you are, the better your review is going to be. You might not get the sale because there's something broken, but I mean, somebody eventually will go, I love that and I want to fix it and then they'll buy it. Make sure you have a smooth, honest and friendly transaction from start to finish. And when that person leaves after picking up the piece of furniture, give them a little bit to get back home. And then once you mark it sold on your Facebook marketplace listing, Facebook should prompt and, and say, do you want this? Do you want to request a review? and you're just gonna hit yes. Request a review, it'll automatically send them, would you like to review, you know, Amy Gerard? And, and then they would say yes, and either it went great, and they love me, or it really stunk, and they're gonna give me a really bad review. So make it go good, just for that review. So once you have like 30 good reviews on your profile, people are way more likely to buy from you than say the person with three stars and 50 reviews, you know? red flag right there. They're not going to want to buy from you if you have bad reviews. Tip five, relist. This one is upfront and easy. After seven days of posting your listing, if it hasn't sold, you do have the option to relist it. I highly recommend doing this because it'll bump your listing right back to the top. From the moment you list your piece of furniture, anybody who else, else who lists after you, it goes right on top of yours. So a week later, there could be a hundred listings on top of yours. And if someone's scrolling and they don't want to go that far down, they will never even see your listing. So make sure that if it doesn't sell after seven days, you go and you go into more, you find that option and hit relist. And sometimes Facebook will message you and say, do you want to relist? You haven't sold this item. Do you want to relist it? Just hit yes. Number six, list in more places. For me, this is the best tip. Your neighborhood should have a buy, sell, trade group on Facebook that you can join. And all your neighboring neighborhoods should have them too. I think I'm part of like six or seven of them. These are groups that are close to your home. And every time you post something on Facebook Marketplace, you 
after you're done, when you're going through, you know, posting your description, taking your pictures, listing the thing, there will be this prompt that says, would you like to list to more places? And any of those groups that you've already joined will show up there in a list. I check pretty much all of them because it takes your post from Marketplace and posts it in those groups. So you're getting so many more views and the more views your listing gets, the more Facebook Marketplace will push it. Kind of like the same thing with YouTube. So actually they're very similar. Everything on the internet has an algorithm. So the more engagement you're getting, the more people like it or save it, um, the more views it's gonna keep it at that top. So the more views you're gonna get. Um, I would even take it as far as send it to a family member, share it. Um, even if you know that, you know, like I'll send it to my husband, he's not going to buy it, but I mean, it was shared. The algorithm says, oh, it's popular. Somebody likes this. So they're going to want to share it to somebody else. This is ultimately how people end up selling their pieces super fast. Like, you know, if you hear, oh, it sold in two hours or a day, it's because right at that moment that they posted it, somebody was like, oh, I like this. I'm going to put it in my basket. And then, you know, it stayed at the top. Another person did it. Another person did it. The more popular it is, the faster it's going to sell. So you want it out there. Don't be shy. That's something that it did take me a really long time to like, I don't know. It's so weird. It's almost like my YouTube channel too. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to share it. I feel embarrassed. There's, it's silly. You are trying to make money. You're trying to sell your furniture. You, if you don't put it out there, nobody's going to see it. So just do it, <laughs> do it. You'll sell it and you'll feel like a million bucks. And one more thing, I didn't add this as a tip, but it is the most important thing. Never sell by yourself. Never buy by yourself. Don't be going to people's houses or having them come to your home if you're alone. Now I know a lot of people, they can't help it. Have a neighbor look out their window just to make sure that nothing weird goes on. Um, I did have a very sketchy experience and I'm not going to get into it in this video. Maybe I will in the future, but um, you, you don't know these people. They are strangers. So be careful, be alert. If you have a gut feeling that something's off, it is. So um, I always have someone with me home. I've had my brother come to my house, my dad come to my house. I make sure my husband's home. I've had a neighbor look out the window and I never go to anybody else's house alone ever make sure that you have your phone on you at all times like in your pocket if you don't have pencil pockets change before you go and make sure that you can put it in your pocket i hope you enjoyed these tips i hope you found them helpful if you did i'd love it if you hit that like button and let's try to get this video out to more people and if you have a friend who you think could benefit for them feel free to share it um, subscribe all those good things and i will see you next time